Good evening, esteemed educators. And we are so excited to have you joining us tonight for this extremely awesome opportunity, this event of celebrating learning with PBS kids, exploring arts and creativity with Pinkalicious and Peterific. My name is Mallory Mbalia, and I will be your moderator for this evening. A little background on me, I am currently an assistant principal at Underwood Gifted and Talented Elementary School in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am also um, a trainer for my local station, UNC TV, as well as a PBS Learning Media Corps, um, Media Corps member, which is now the PBS Digital Innovators. I have an absolute passion for the arts and it gives a kid such a platform to show their true understanding of content when they express it in a way that is creative, unique, and inspiring. So with that, I would like to share with you that we hope that everyone walks away tonight inspired and ready to integrate the arts and this powerful tool into the learning and that's happening in your classrooms to make it even more connecting for kids and engaging. And so with that, let me go ahead and let everyone know that at the end of this, this wonderful session that you will be receiving a certificate that will give you one PD credit and you will be able to find that in a share link at the end of the bottom chat box where you can access that certificate and print it out. With that being said, I would love to go ahead and introduce who our panelists are going to be this evening. So I am going to start with Miss Victoria Kahn. Miss <laughs> uh, Han is the award-winning illustrator and author of the picture book series featuring whimsical and effervescent character Pink Alicious. Victoria co-authored and illustrated the first two books, Pink Alicious and Purple Alicious, and co-wrote the play Pink Alicious the Musical. She wrote and illustrated Gold Alicious and is working on several more books about the adventures and antics of Pinkalicious. Victoria is a co-executive producer for Pinkalicious and Peterific on PBS Kids. The new PBS Kids series is based on author, author artist Victoria Can's number one New York Times best-selling Pinkalicious book series, which includes 63 titles and has sold more than 23 million copies to date. The most recent book in the series, Peterific, debuted in May 2017. The HarperCollins book series has been translated into eight languages, is sold in nine countries, and inspired a stage musical, Pink Alicious the Musical, which premiered in New York City to sold out audiences and continues to be performed there and across the country. So we are so excited to have Miss Victoria Can with us. Also this evening, we have Dorothea Gillum. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so to give you some background on this lovely lady, she served as executive producer at WGBH for the Emmy award-winning PBS series, Curious George, and now oversees Pinkalicious and Peterific. She began her television career as a writer and auto audio edi editor on the Peabody award-winning series, Dr. Katz for Comedy, Comedy Central. Dorothea went, to, went on to produce Science Court for ABC Saturday Morning and Time Warp, trio for Discovery Kids. Before creating her first animated comedy, A Money for Oxygen in 2006, she created Word Girl for PBS Kids, winner of four Emmys and a Television Critics Award. We are very honored to have you on today. And Thank then, you so much. yes. And then we also have Miss Ginger Hubner. Hello. <laughs> so, Ginger Hubner is the founding director of Roots and Wings School of Art and Design in Asheville, North Carolina. Roots and Wings provides a variety of programming, including a visual arts preschool, after school community design lab programs weekly art and design classes, and custom private art sessions. 
with a master's in teaching visual arts and a bachelor of architecture, Ginger brings a unique perspective to the field of art and design education. She has taught a wide spectrum of ages in a variety of environments. She, is, she also has her own studio practice, creating works of art using the mediums of collage, chalk pastel, and caustic, and other mixed media. We are so happy to have you, Ms. Ginger. Thanks for having me. So, we now know all our wonderful panelists tonight. Let me give you a run of the show. So tonight, we will hear first from Ms. Dorothea about the show a little bit. Then we will then watch a clip from Pink Delicious, followed by an arts and curriculum discussion with Miss Ginger. And to wrap this whole beautiful pink present all up, we will end with a question and answer session with Miss Victoria. So with that, I am now gonna turn this over to Dorothea. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mallory, and thank you everyone for joining us this evening. It is so exciting to be here um, and to introduce to you Pinkalicious and Peterific, which, as you've just heard, is based on Victoria's wildly popular book series. And for the three of you out there who may not be familiar with it, I'll tell you that the <laughs> series is about a sister and brother who live in Pinkville, which is kind of an ordinary place with a touch of whimsy. So in Pinkville, you would go to school, you'd ride your scooter, you might play hopscotch with your friends. And every once in a while, it might snow pink snow, or the springtime fairies might come to make the flowers bloom, or uh, your kite might get, a gust of wind may come up and pick you and your kite up off the ground. So it's just, the series is really um, about the adventures of Pinkalicious and her brother Peter and their friends within this very kind of cool, aspirational, um, yet very relatable world. Um, and when we adapted the books for PBS uh, and we thought about what curriculum would be a good match for the books, it, the choice was really simple because we just had to look at Pinkalicious, the character. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I think she's very much to me like Victoria might have been when she was a little girl. She's sort of a budding artist. She sees um, creative possibilities everywhere. She isn't afraid to express herself and her opinions, even if other people disagree. And she loves solving problems and helping other people come up with say, creative solutions as well. So she's the perfect vehicle for the arts and creativity. And arts education is baked into every episode. Um, we're, we, and we define the arts kind of broadly to be music, dance, theater, and visual arts. And we're very fortunate to work with Victoria, um, who is, was herself a teacher at Rhode Island School of Design and other places. And then, as you know, our uh, advisors like Ginger, who's here with us tonight, and we have advisors that work with us for on, in all of the different areas of the arts, and they help us identify the learning objectives, they review all the scripts, and they help us think about ways to enhance the arts and, um, and really inspire kids to want to go off and be creative on their own. My role as executive producer is to oversee sort of all the pieces of production. So I work with Victoria and our advisors on scripts, casting, animation, music. We also do a whole host of digital games and apps. And of course, you'll hear more about the PBS learning media activities. So and I'm, I, I, I work with Victoria and PBS to make sure all aspects of the series achieve our goals. I also, one of the most fun parts of the job for me is I get to do the voice direction. And we, we get to, you'll, as you'll see later when you see an episode, we, uh, we have an amazing cast of, of really talented kids. And a little inside story here, we, when it came to casting the part of Pinkalicious, over 100 girls auditioned. They wow. came from as far, we, we work in, uh, we're based in New York for the um, voice records and they came as far as Albany, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Philadelphia. There were a lot of kids, a lot of girls who wanted to play Pinkalicious. 
And we narrowed it down to uh, six really super talented girls and boys to play Pinkalicious and Peter. And, and the two who got the part for Pinkalicious and Peter, as soon as they met, it was like they'd known each other all their lives. They had instant chemistry. And I think that really comes through, as you'll see, in the, um, in the episodes. So we started production on this series 16 months ago. So the fact that we're here tonight with you is extremely exciting. And um, that the series is going to be premiering on PBS on Feb February 19th. But you don't have to wait. If you want to see episodes, you can watch them right now on the PBS Kids YouTube channel or on the PBS Kids video app. Um, so that is that is a little bit of background and now i'm very excited to uh share we're very excited to share an episode with you we're going to show best pink present which is an 11 minute story and we chose this episode in particular to share with you because it showcases something that uh, something that you may be familiar with as educators which is that moment when a kid makes a piece of art and it didn't turn out the way that they were hoping it would. Or they have an oops moment where something goes wrong. And how do they work through that moment? So without further ado, here is Best Pink Present. Thank you, everyone, for watching the new episode. We really hope that you enjoyed it. And now, with that as our inspiration and our backdrop, we are going to go right into a conversation with our panelist, Ms. Ginger, about the power of arts in the classroom. So, Ginger, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm excited to see what we're going to talk about here. Well, you ready to dive in? Uh-huh. Let's do All it. All right. Our first question is, one of the challenges with art is that the final product doesn't always end up exactly how we imagined it in our heads. How can teachers help young students work through this frustration? That is very true for many people, not just little kids, adults too, right? We fall into that. It can be frustrating to not end up where you feel like you're aiming, but one of the most important things that working through this teaches is flexibility. The idea that it's not necessarily right or wrong, that there is sometimes a gray area or a mistake or an oops, and it doesn't turn out the way that we were thinking. So we have to learn how to, how to move through that. Talking to your students about what um, could be instead, right? What's another pathway? What else have they discovered? Like Pinka in the episode you just watched, how she ends up going, oh my goodness, wait, that could be this instead. But five seconds before, she was super upset. So having conversations with them, having them talk to their neighbor at their table, maybe they're working in a group. What does someone else think that they could do with the end that they got to that is not where they wanted to be? It helps us be surprised. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, yeah. Novelty is the spice of education, right? Okay. So with that in mind, what does it mean to emphasize that process rather than the end result? So the process is where the wonder happens. It is something we really need to celebrate more. Emphasizing the process allows for experimentation. It allows for us to think a little bit wider. It allows for making discoveries and ending up sometimes where you didn't think you would. Um, if everything was always about the outcome, being right or just being wrong. Uh, how would we ever develop risk-taking skills, problem-solving skills, flexibility, like we were just talking about? This process, it's invaluable. And for all kinds of learners, uh, I have seen it firsthand. The students that struggle the most in classrooms are reached. They, this process is hugely important for them. Yes, the validation through the process too. The process, I feel, is the opportunity to encourage students to use those critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and to really flex their creativity even more. Because it's one thing to show, oh, I have a problem and I have the right answer right here, right now. How brilliant is it to be able to flex yourself and think of a variety of ways to go around it? 
isn't that what we want in our students? We want them to be able to think. So going on from that, what steps can teachers make take to make sure that all art doesn't look the same um, and reflects the unique perspectives of each student? How can we emphasize art as a means of self-expression? Yes, ma'am, that is, it's huge. Again, if you go through this idea and, and the way that you present the lesson and the, and the way that you're thinking about it and it's not about the end product, it will naturally unfold um, and be unique for every student. So that you're, you're not, if you're setting a project up and all the pieces are the same and they all have exactly the same tools, you've pre-cut all the paper and they're supposed to just assemble it, it's gonna look the same or at least similar. So it has to do with uh, thinking about allowing for experimentation in that lesson. How can things be a little bit more open-ended? Um, it's also how you present the lesson. So uh, when you put the materials on the table, are all, are all the tables separate? Are you putting kids together and collaborating? Um, the lesson plan that goes along with this episode on the PBS Learning Media site that there's a link to somewhere in where you're watching, um, you know, this lesson plan talks about put, uh, setting up stations around the classroom and in the stations there's all these different materials. And that's great because that's the experimentation part. And there's different tools, there's different things for the kids to work with. They're working, uh, they're not actually sitting in a desk the whole time, they're moving around the classroom and just physically getting up and moving, doing something different like that changes the process for a lot of kids. Um, those are just some ideas. Yeah, and I hope people are checking out that cool lesson plan on the screen because it has been said that there will be many more coming through right. that fabulous resource, PBS Learning Media. So please continue to check in on these great resources. And remember, just like art, these lesson plans are a great foundation, but take it and run with it. Make it work for your classroom and make maybe the kids will even alter it and make it even cooler, right? Um, going so back- I wanna say one more thing. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. So the idea of self-expression, I didn't really, we didn't really talk about that, but what I love about this lesson that is on there too is that, you know, all the kids have made these singular pieces, but the culmination of the lesson is actually to put them together as a quilt or a big collaborative piece. And having, uh, that's a huge thing. This is, you know, they each created their individual piece. They're all going to be beautifully different, but then at the same time, they, they were working together. And that's a really, it's a very easy way to teach a really cool lesson. Yeah, and teach those collaboration skills. Mm -hmm. And how beautiful is it when they have a project all together that can tell a story? Yeah. So connecting arts and literacy, drop the mic. All right. <laughs> so with that going on in mind, let's go on to the next one, which is some teachers have said, and I know this, I used to be in an art magnet. Um, and when you're at an art magnet, Art integration is supposed to be your mechanism, your means of teaching the curriculum, right? But I have heard teachers say, and I know others have, that teaching arts and creativity can feel like a distraction. It's hard to make time in my classroom to schedule this in. How can teachers embed these concepts into the everyday instruction? Mm. So uh, <laughs> for me, <laughs> The way that I look at it, I think a lot of it is how you look at it. I really believe that creativity is not an extra. It is not something that is um, just uh, what we call them specials in, in school, right? Like the special classes that unfortunately in many schools are not even there anymore. Right. Um, creativity integration to me can layer over anything. So it, and not just teaching life, you know, when you're cooking something or you're doing a sport or whatever. So when I look at it in the classroom, I think, oh my gosh, give me a subject, give me a title, give me a, a word, and we can make something happen that will pull creativity out of our kids. Um, at Roots and Wings, we use the tools of art and design. And what we're talking about in this session is, are the tools of art and design. But um, what I would say to teachers, especially those who are hesitant, is what are, what are you creative with? What, what makes you get excited? And think about that as your strength in how you can weave it into your classroom. If it's not art and design to start, then start at that point, start with what excites you. But art and design are everywhere around us. It is a language, right? It is our world, the space that you live in, the room that you teach in, the clothes that you choose to put on. We live in, you know, it's very easy to start talking about that and, and taking any concept, social studies, language, arts, math, 
and, and weaving it in. And what's really cool again is these lessons that the Learning Media site has, they give you a really easy way to start experimenting. Which is brilliant because like I said in the beginning, um, before we started this question, art integration is not an extra thing in the day. It is a way of delivering instruction. So taking what you already have to do and adding those elements of creativity and self-expression for students is only going to show you the brilliance that you have in your classroom. Because those are our strongest, our strongest learners, right? Think about it. They often are minimized, but the ones who think, well, I can't stand the outside the box term. Why does it always have to be a box? I can't <laughs> be like a triangle. I, I don't know. <laughs> Outside I think link wider. Are. Just think wider. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, if they can take content and create a piece, create a song, create a drum, dramatic interpretation, mm -hmm. create a story. I'm sorry. I think that is showing true connection to content. It is now relevant to them. And it is a lot more powerful than just answering questions on a question and answer sheet. Yep, and it and it goes, so then that kind of ties back to what we were saying about the end product, right? Right. Maybe the end product we don't even know as the teacher. And that is a, that's a very, that's a different way to think about it, but allowing the students to show us where we need to end up for each one of them and really allowing for that diversity in learning um, where the, the kids are coming from. Exactly, exactly. All right, so I've got one more for you, ready? All right. All right. So how we thinking about those diverse learners we have in our classroom. Um, we're going to go to the ones that teachers may spend a lot of energy on, right? Or energy with. And it is how can teachers use the arts to reach out to struggling students? It's a really good question. But again, I think if, if it's in the classroom, you will see it working. So things that we've already talked about, the idea of having things that are hands-on, not just worksheet-based, um, changing how you're setting up the room, having the kids simply stand up or push all the desks together or put them all in a circle, or you know, if they're not in a line, maybe they're in one long line. Um, and collaboration is a huge thing. And in collaboration, you might go, oh my God, no way, I can't put that person in a group. They're never gonna make it work. But there's ways to make collaboration work where you give each student has a task or a job. Jobs are really like, it gives them something to focus on and they get excited about having things that they're they're doing for the greater good, right? So um, it's amazing to watch a, a classroom of kids with all kinds of different learners come together um, and do, <laughs> and just create uh, with who, really just with who they are as people, just being able to watch that is really powerful. Um, if we, yeah, if we just, if we, that's it. That one touches, touches deep. Touches. <laughs> um, I just, I really believe that creativity in the classroom has the power to change uh, a lot. Yeah, I think creativity in the classroom has the power to change expectations out of students. You know, that expectation mm -hmm. gap that's out there, you know, we try to call it the achievement gap, but I, I, I like to go to expectation. You know, yeah. That's struggling students, Let's think about why they're struggling. Look at, like you said, the environment in the classroom. All kids don't learn the same. We all like to, to say that because we know it's true, but what are we really doing? What are we really doing to support that? Um, and create, creating the arts and incorporating the arts gives kids an outlet and a platform that shows the way they connect to content. I can mm -hmm. tell a story of a student that I had that came in as a repeat kindergartner and I'm pretty sure if I looked at his file or if I had looked at what the previous school had said, they probably would have cast him off as someone who is not going to assess content, who can't learn or is having a hard time. We're going to diminish him, blah, blah, blah. That is not true. Can I tell you, wonderful people tonight, that that student had such a gift for drawing that he could draw the world. He could draw emotions. He could draw how he could connect to the world and see it. You cannot tell me that that student wasn't smart. You cannot tell me that that student couldn't do. He just did it in a way mm -hmm. different from what was expected. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, in a more brilliant and more critical thinking 
and creative way. We have got to start flipping how we look at learners in our classroom and stop looking at struggling students because they're not getting it the way that the textbook or the curriculum says. We have to look at why. We have to change the environment. I'm sorry, I believe all kids can and will. They're going to be learning. They're going to be picking up something. Let's find a way that they really connect to and that will really empower them and show their true strengths. All right. So I see one other question there. Um, I do. One more coming up. Um, mm -hmm. It says, how do you encourage a preschooler who always says, I can't, and who really doesn't seem to care about art. <laughs> there were those, those around. That's a, yeah, that's a good question. And it can happen at, really again in any age there, that happens. I think um, one of the things that we do is to, ex, is to give choices, right? So when you're talking about, let's say you, the lesson you're looking at uh, is, a, is dealing with watercolors uh, and there's a very specific set of mediums you're gonna use. Well, you might wanna open it up to other mediums. And this is where the teacher, you know, having flexibility as a teacher and just kind of being open to another option, another end, another you know part of the process. So maybe I'd go get a bunch of magazines out and say, well, what about, maybe we could think about it this way. Let them choose something else. Usually there's something that they will, that they will gravitate to. Um, sometimes kids really love building. And when it comes to two dimensional stuff, it just, they just can't connect to it. And so throwing all your recycling on the floor and say, great, you can have all this stuff to do this project could completely change everything for that student. I like it. Yeah. I think about think about those kids. I would just celebrate any little thing they did and be like, that's awesome. How can you <laughs> And then they start to be like, oh yeah, I am awesome. <laughs> Cause you are. Yeah. It's about building confidence. Absolutely. Definitely. Build that confidence. Build that confidence. Well, thank you so much, Ginger. Um yeah. at this point in our flow for the run of the show. We are going to go to the amazing, phenomenal, creative queen herself and have a question and answer session with Miss Victoria Kahn. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm turning pink. <laughs> You've embarrassed me so much that I am, I am literally pink right now, so. <laughs> You always speak the truth here. Look, <laughs> I, I, this is this is such a thrill um, for me. It it is so great to be here. It is so great to have this conversation. This is such an important conversation to have. Um, I, you know, I just can't thank you enough for for tuning in and and listening. Um, being creative is. Um, it creates a palette of possibilities, honestly. Um, when, when we are creative, we have life force energy flowing through us. We feel alive. Um, creating is making something out of nothing. You think about plants, you know, you, you plants come from nothing. Plants are creating. Cells are creating. That's why when we create, we feel alive and we feel empowered and we feel really good about ourselves. Um, when we are not creating, we feel dull, we feel sad. Um, and that's why no matter what we're doing, whether or not we're just turning on the radio and singing to a song on the radio, that will raise our spirit and make us feel really, really good. Um, that, that is being creative is, is feeling joy. And that's one of the things that I've tried to get across in my books for, for the past 12 years. And that's something that I'm trying to get across in the show. Um, that really pink is love, uh, pink is joy, and pink is uh, being creative and imaginative. So all the characters have that at their fingertips. Imagine, you know, back to singing a song, imagine if everybody in the world sang the same song at the same time. You know, what if we all sang, all you need is love? Can you imagine what, 
an incredible moment that is. So this show is really about creating the possibilities for moments like that to happen, to create possibilities where extra, extraordinary events can happen that will bring joy and peace and love to every child. Um, it is so much fun to talk about how to bring that into the classroom even further. Um, I'm, and I'm just getting very inspired listening to all of you. It, it actually makes me think of um, this story. Uh, this happened to my daughter. My daughter came home from school once and, and she was crying. And, um, and I said, what, what's, what's the matter? What, what, what happened? And she said, I got in trouble today. And I said, why? And she said, well, I, I took a post-it note and I, I stuck it on my pencil like this. And, and I said, I said, well, that doesn't seem so bad. What's wrong with that? She goes, well, I went like this. And I said, well, what's wrong with doing that? And she said, well, the teacher asked me why I was doing that. And she told me not to waste post-it notes. And I, and, and I said, well, well, why were you doing that? And she said, well, I was, I had imagined a country and I, this was the flag of my country. And I had imagined little people on my desk and that there was a little world of little people. And I was imagining what, what they were thinking and what they were like. And I was like, you were, oh my God, what a teachable moment. <laughs> Your teacher missed it. How could she have yeah. missed that moment Right. where she could have said what you know what are they like what are they wearing how tall are they right. you know what do they think are they friendly do they have war do they have poetry what would their what would their color be what would their flower be you know what what is it like in that country she could have asked a million questions which would then um, open up. So I think one one of the things about being creative is asking questions. Uh, it's always asking the question. When we create art, it's asking the question, who am I? What is it that I love? What do I find beautiful? What is it that motivates me? And when you look at somebody's artwork, you ask them that question, why did you create this? What inspired you? What motivated you to put this color next to this color? What motivated you to do a somersault in the middle of a dance? You know, what motivated you to create a mask and pretend that you are a monkey? Why, why did you want to do that? And what did you have to say? Because art is connection. And it's the connection of expressing yourself without sometimes language. It's universal, which is why we can go to Italy and we can not speak the language, but we can look at the art on the wall and we can see the paintings and we can be moved to tears because it's, it's a language that defies time and it defies language and it defies culture. It's that universal and it's that important. So I think this is such a wonderful conversation to have, and I'm happy to be here. Sorry, you didn't even get to ask me a question. But you know what? <laughs> your passion and your words answered so many. So let's check off the questions you already answered. So uh, how does art and creativity help a kid in life? Check. Um, how do you think about Check. What's the new Pinkalicious and Peter Schiffick? Peterific show about. We got that too. So let's go to this one, which is um, what types of art and creativity will be explored in the show? Well, it's very interesting, you know, where we are exploring music, we're exploring dance, we're exploring visual arts, but within uh, and theater. And within all of that, there's, there's so many little winding paths that we could go down. Um, just this show um, that everybody just watched, which is about making marks on paper. But then there's the whole idea of being open to 
the process to, to letting go and to letting things flow, which is really, you know, if I, if I had to say why I'm an artist, it's because I love the process. I, I can't be so tied into the product because I would feel so incredibly frustrated. There's so many times that I start a piece of artwork and it's not what I think it is. There's so many times I've started to write a story and it's not the story that I thought I was going to write. The way that I deal with that is I will then get another piece of paper. I will work on a couple of pieces all at once and then I'll see which is the one that my energy wants to go to, which is the one that I feel compelled to work on that I feel like I need to express and I need to get this out of my system. And it, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's joy, but other times it's, I just need to work it out. You know, it could be anger. I could be very angry about something and just want to draw it. and God, I, it's cathartic. I, I feel so great afterwards. Um, so we're exploring so, so many realms of, of creativity, I, I really want to say it's also really about imagination. Um, and it, 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 was, it was Einstein who said that knowledge is limited, but imagination encircles the world. So I, I, it's very ambitious of us to say we have a show that's about imagination. Um, imagination is not something that you can teach. It's really about relaxing and feeling good and letting it flow and being open to it. Imagination is really about playing. So um, in, in this world of Pinkville, I think one of the things that you will see happening with the kids and the characters is that they are playing all the time. And sometimes something will happen maybe something bad, they might get in trouble um, and they have to figure out how to get out of this situation. What is, what is the way to solve that problem? Um, and they have to use their, their imagination. So. We have a question from somebody who's tuning in tonight and then we're gonna go ahead and insert this one right now cause I, we find it delightful. And so the question is from Leanne, and it, it goes like this. Does Peter have a signature color like his sister? Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's very interesting. Uh, Leanne, I wish I could see you face to face because I would ask you, what do you think Peter's signature color is? What, what would you think it is? Um, uh, Peter, Peter loves pink also, but he also loves purple and he loves green. Uh, because it's Pinkville, there, everybody loves the color pink, Mr. and Mrs. Pinkerton, um, and everybody, but it's a very colorful place. Um, and we, we have to embrace all the colors of the rainbow. So I don't know yet. We'll, we'll see what, what happens <laughs> with Peter. There, there's an episode where he loves the blues. Uh, mm. uh, we got, well, we got another question. It's here. It says, um, are Pinkalicious and Peterific based on people you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that sort of brings me to how I came to write the books. Um, the, the books were inspired by my daughters. Um, all the, uh, each, each book that I wrote was based on something that happened in our, our lives. Um, so uh, for, uh, I'll tell you this. Do you want me to tell the story of how Pinkalicious came to be written? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, my daughter was three years old and really, really loved the color pink. And um, it was April Fool's Day. Now, I love April Fool's Day because you get to make up a lot of stories and you can make up anything and you don't have to tell anybody that it's a story. That's why it's really, really fun. Uh, so I, and I will, I will do, I will do it face to face. I will write letters. I will do phone calls and I will write emails. And I send out an email to my friends and family saying that my daughter had turned pink from eating too many cupcakes and um, uh, that she had a really bad case of pinkatitis. 
And some people knew I was joking, but other people thought <laughs> I was serious. And one of one of my best friends who is on her way over with her daughter for a play date, saw the email, freaked out, called her pediatrician, said, have you ever heard of pancreatitis? The, the pediatrician said, I have never heard of it, but you, you better be careful. It might be contagious. What? Don't go there. So she canceled the play date. What? And my rule is never, never to say that it's, um, it's an April Fool's joke. So I, I just oh have to go, go along with it. And then the next day I called her up and I said, you know, that, that was an April Fool's joke. And, and she said, it, it, it was. Well, <laughs> you should make that into a children's book. And I am there. That's how it started. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That makes it authentically awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's what, so you got to be careful. Don't eat too many pink cupcakes on April Fool's Day. That's, that's beautiful. All right. We do have a question here that said, did you... And this is going to go to PBS. Did you watch PBS as a kid? And what was your favorite show? I did watch PBS. I watched The Electric Company. I, mm -hmm. I really, I really loved The Electric Company. That, you know, Morgan Freeman was on it. <laughs> even, even as a little kid, I knew that he had star quality. So, um, Beautiful. And, then, and then, you know, my younger sibling loved, loved Sesame Street. But I, I was a little older for that. Well, just to, that, to wrap things up a little bit, um, the last question I'm just going to say is put out there. Are there any other tips or advice you'd like to share with teachers as they aim to integrate, you know, the arts and creativity into their curriculum? Is that for me? That's for you. Yes. I, I, I would just say be encouraging. Let it flow. Let it happen. I think if you are here listening, tuned in, you are already doing that probably. So I congratulate you for being open to it. And I say, continue to do what you're doing because clearly you are going to make it happen. And it is so important, especially now that kids have this starting at a very early age and before they can even talk, I have heard stories of kids walking over to a computer and trying to scroll on it. So Pinkville is, is a world where um, there are no iPhones and there are no computers. And it's, it's really all about, can you take a wooden spoon and what can you make out of a wooden spoon? And these lessons are incredibly important in this day and age. So just continue to encourage that. Well, Miss Victoria, we want to thank you so much for all your insight and sharing your gifts and talents with the world. We want to thank Dorothea for all of your contributions to this amazing series that is about to roll out and has, you know, so many people have already tuned in to this premiere episode. Ginger, continue being a champion for the arts and thank you for all that you do. And to everyone out there, we just want to remind you to look at those lesson plans we have on PBS Digital, um, PBS Learning Media, they are there for you. Please go on there and see all the different resources that we have. Get excited for the show. Get your the kids are going to just love it. Why, with characters like Pinkalicious and Peterific, you just can't go wrong. So I hope everyone enjoyed everything tonight. Please also don't forget to check that box to go ahead and print out your certificate for your PD credit. And we are wishing everyone a fantastic evening. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you, Mallory. Thank you. Thanks, Mallory.